Over the years, Dior Cosmetics has navigated through challenges, including two bankruptcies and multiple controversies, emerging as a favorite for countless enthusiasts. More than its popularity, Dior's influence has been substantial. The journey started with the iconic Miss Dior perfume, introduced alongside the foundation of Maison in 1947. This fragrance was a sensory ode to the post-WW2 woman, seeking luxury and freedom. Named after Christian Dior's sister, a Nazi resistor, its creation intended to capture the essence of love. By 1948, the perfume was joined by two others, Lot 4 and Diorama. Their success convinced Dior of the potential profitability. In 1949, breaking traditions, he expanded distribution by licensing regional production centers. This decision, though criticized for diluting the luxury image, turned out to be financially prudent. Interestingly, while the Miss Dior perfume was closely associated with the brand's fashion line, Dior saw the potential of separating the cosmetics marketing from the clothing. Recognizing the value of selling the brand's ethos more than the product itself, Dior introduced lipsticks in 1950. Three years later came the Dior Rouge, a prominent product that had a dual-case design for utility and luxury. What is love? How do you say? Dior? Dior Addy? I think I know. Dior? Ooh, la, 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 la. Despite the founder's demise in 1957, the cosmetic line thrived. By 1960, their lipsticks had an extensive color palette. However, 1962 marked another pioneering moment when Dior launched its nail color line. But the mid-60s brought challenges. Declining buzz due to the brand's association with less impactful designers affected its cosmetic sales. Yet, Dior wasn't done innovating. The launch of Eau Sauvage, a fragrance for men in 1966, although successful, didn't uplift the brand as expected. Recognizing the need for a fresh perspective, Dior onboarded Serge Luton, a renowned makeup artist, as their beauty image director in 1967. By 1969, Luton introduced a comprehensive product range for Dior. His brilliance lay in leveraging contemporary imagery for marketing, setting Dior apart as a creative yet premium brand. This unique positioning extended to their perfumes as well. 1973 was revolutionary when Dior employed a celebrity, Angelica Houston, for cosmetics marketing a first in the industry. Luton continued to innovate, drawing inspiration from classical artworks. However, despite Dior's worth nearing 175 million by the end of the 70s, the brand faced adversity due to its parent company, Boussac's bankruptcy in 1979. In 1980, under new leadership from the Willow Brothers, Luton's was succeeded by Tyon. Tyon's initial role was to carry on Luton's legacy, given the Willow Brothers' lack of expertise in luxury products. Tyon retained the Impressionist-inspired visuals of Luton's, modernizing them to appeal to the 1980s audience. While Tyon was undeniably talented, the business was on the brink of failure. With the Willow Brothers at the helm, Dior released Jewels, a men's fragrance in 1980. Despite its cult following today, it wasn't enough to rescue the company. Facing bankruptcy, the Willow Brothers set Dior on a path towards administration. However, Bernardino and his investment company intervened, saving Dior. Appointing himself as CEO, Bernardino restructured Dior into the LVMH, Louis Vuitton Moet Hennessy conglomerate in 1985. This change made Dior profitable, thanks to Luton's heritage and Tyon's modern reinventions. Tyon continued to work under LVMH, introducing bold makeup products in the late 80s, Advertisements evolved and the company unveiled iconic perfumes, complemented by film ads like those for June and Poison. The consistent art-inspired imagery across products fostered a coherent brand identity for Dior. By spring-summer, 97, 
John Galliano joined the Dior Couture and Mainline collections. Galliano's creative genius, combined with Pat McGrath's influential makeup artistry, elevated Dior's fashion and cosmetics lines. Perfumes like J'adore in 1999 were massive hits. Consequently, Dior started leaning towards a legacy brand, emphasizing consistency in product offerings. I can't resist. I can't resist temptation. Is it bad to get what you want? I only want the best. J'adore. J'adore. A new fragrance from Christian Dior. Francois Damashi took over as Dior's perfume creator in 2006. The brand began emphasizing celebrity endorsements, featuring stars like Monica Bellucci, Natalie Portman, Jude Law, and Charlize Theron in their campaigns. Miss Dior, Rose and Roses. I love you! Prove it. Dior, the new eau de parfum, Dior. However, a scandal involving Galliano in 2011 threatened the brand's image. Dior acted swiftly, severing ties with Galliano. It took until around 2013 for the after effects to diminish, with cosmetics emerging as a significant growth driver. Robert Pattinson replaced Jude Law as a Dior ambassador in 2013. A year later, Peter Phillips took over from Tyon. Known for revitalizing Chanel's makeup line, Philips introduced a fresh but more neutral aesthetic, perhaps influenced by Korean makeup trends. With Philips and new perfume director Francis on board, Dior secured endorsements from celebrities like Rihanna, Cara Delevingne, Kim Ji Soo, and notably, Johnny Depp. Depp's endorsement was controversial, especially amidst legal battles with his ex, Amber Heard. However, as events unfolded, public sentiment shifted in Depp's favor, boosting sales of the Dior Sauvage fragrance. The scent became a global bestseller, marking a financial zenith for Dior Cosmetics. Today, Dior Cosmetics stands as a cherished legacy brand. They ventured into the digital domain in 2021 with a lipstick try-on app. The brand's future seems promising, especially if they reconnect with the creative flair initiated by Lutens and leverage it in the age of social media.